I want to start with an issue that I know is so important to you, and that's the mental health of your officers. We know officers see a lot, they go through a lot, they endure a lot, probably more than we'll ever know, but you want to make sure that they are handling the stresses of the job. Tell me how you're, how you're doing that. Absolutely. Well, you know, in, in the 21st Century Policing Task Force that was implemented in 2014 by Barack Obama, there was a portion of that that concerned mental health. And, and unfortunately, we get so busy in our daily lives and our daily duties that that kind of gets neglected. Um, officers see the very worst in people. They see the very worst in situations and scenes. And I think it's um, unfortunate that it has kind of taken a back seat to just getting the job done. And then, of course, officers are, are tough people, and, and they don't want to acknowledge that they have a weakness or that something upsets them. Um, I think we're starting to break down that stereotype. Uh, you know, we're working on starting a chapter of the First Responders Foundation, and that organization is, is just tremendous, and they've really started to focus on the mental health aspect of, of policing, so they're putting a lot of money towards that. The Sherwood Foundation is, is contributing, and, and, and many other organizations. And so uh, what we're doing is, as we move into the next year, we're going to look at how do we ensure good mental health availability for the officers. When there's a significant incident or scene, you know, we're going to be sure to make sure those officers are okay. We can bring in trained counselors to visit with them either individually or as a shift. Um, you know, something else that has been brought to my attention numerous times in my time is communication. A lot of times the officers just don't know, you know, what is the command staff doing? What's going on at the top? Um, so I've implemented a newsletter. I'm involving other members of the department, and so we're really working hard to get out information on a monthly basis about what's going on, what programs are we working on, what equipment are we looking at buying, um, what new businesses might be coming into the area, um, allowing, you know, like I said, different uh, lead instructors to put out information regarding their disciplines, use of force, CALEA, anything that might be of pertinent information. Um, we also provide um, uh, an hour for every officer to, to work out because it's important to stay fit and stay exercised. You know, I think we've had incidents in in policing where officers who were unfit had a difficult time with the situation. So um, we allow them for that release and that's built into the contract and I think that's very important. And I think lastly, in the coming um, year, we'll be looking at some, you know, we're starting to outgrow our current facility. So um, I know that other departments uh, here and around the country are starting to implement kind of a down room. Mm -hmm. where officers can get away for 15 minutes, or, you know, just whether there's a you know, massage chair in there or something that they can go in, get away for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is, clear their head. Um, so we'll be looking at maybe adding something like that in the future as well. That's but it's something we have to be aware of. Yeah, it's so important. What's your fear if, if these uh, issues aren't addressed, like if, if mental health isn't addressed by police departments? Well, that, that's unfortunately where you see some of the incidents that occur. Um, you know, officers are human. <laughs> yeah. They have families. Uh, they, have, they have the same struggles that, that all Americans do. And, um, you know, I can tell you 99% of the officers I know generally want to do the very best job they can. They care about the reputation of themselves and their department, and they work very hard. And I'm extremely proud of, of my men and women um, at the department, and, and they do a wonderful job day in and day out. I mean, all of the Sarpy County law enforcement does. And, and, but again, if we don't recognize where there's an issue, um, you know, we have an early warning system, which I think all departments do now or are moving to, where you want to identify somebody who's having some situations mm -hmm. so you can make uh, that counseling piece available to them. Yeah. And, and, but again, you don't want any of their built up frustrations to manifest itself into an unfortunate use of force situation or, or something else in the street. You know, furthermore, officers are tasked with doing so much more than, than we ever probably should. I mean, we're dealing, I mean, we are the, the garbage man. We clean up any and all situations. And you're asking officers to wear about seven different hats. And, and I think as a, as a society, we need to understand that that's difficult for anyone. You know, you're, you're trying to be an expert in all these yeah. different areas, in mental health, a psychologist, a counselor, a teacher, a coach, a, a disciplinarian, an enforcer, a guardian. And so those are very difficult. I mean, it's probably one of the toughest jobs out there from, from, from that perspective. And I think we need to recognize that as society and, and then work together to find those solutions. You mentioned use of force. Seems like since the death of George Floyd, we've heard that phrase a lot, use of force, 
nationwide. But the Pavilion Police Department, you guys are doing something about it. You're really investing in tools to reduce the amount of force used by police officers. Tell me about this body wrap that we're, <laughs> we're hearing about. So it sounds like something, it looks like something you'd see in a movie almost. Well, it, yeah, that, that is something that uh, Chief Lyons brought with him from, from Missouri. Um, in the area of use of force, I would tell you that obviously is the hot button issue, the hot button topic of today. And again, I review every single use of force incidents, uh, incident that, that occurs and, and I can legitimately tell you that our officers use the least amount of force time and again to, sec to, to secure an individual. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some people may bristle at this, but policing's never been more professional than it is right now. I mean, there was a recent study a while back that, you know, 85% of the officers will tell you that the most stress they get is from command overseeing what they do and, and, and watching what they do. And, and so there's a, there is an abundance of training now available. There is a tremendous amount of oversight. I'm um, rightly so, as there should be. Mm -hmm. um, but in the way of, of, of less lethal, we've really invested a lot in some, some great technologies. The wrap is what that is called. And that involves uh, basically uh, where if you have an individual either in mental health crisis or just refusing to, to relax and, and stay calm, um, we can basically secure their legs and their torso and then sit them up in a seated position or on their side, kind of like an L. Mm -hmm. And then you can even move them like that. So it can help reduce the asphyxiation deaths, the excited delirium that occurs, um, because it really puts you into like a taco. Yeah. <laughs> and, and You're so, not going anywhere. No, and, yeah. no, and we train on that uh, annually, a couple times annually. We train on that regularly, and we've used it a tremendous amount really? of times. We really have, and it really, about 99% of the time, really takes the fight right out of you and, and calms the situation. So that is called the wrap. Uh, we've also invested in a new, uh, uh, CS gel um, instead of OC spray. OC mm -hmm. spray is, is kind of the gift that keeps on giving, we like to say, where it really hurts in, in 20, 30 minutes to decon your feeling. Oh, wow. It's hard to decon, you need a lot of water. Um, well, the CS gel by Presidia, we've just recently tested it, and what it does is about the same effects. It doesn't hit the respiratory as much as OC, but it does sting and there is pain, but it comes with a decon, a bottle, and you can really decon in about four or five minutes. So you have, a, you have a way reduced amount of decon time. And our goal is never to inflict pain on anybody. It's simply to do what we need to do to affect the arrest, mm -hmm. to subdue them. So we think it's a great product, so we're rolling that out. Um, we've, of course, invested in taser technology, and then most recently called the Bola Wrap, which basically is like Spider-Man, Spider-Man in your hand. It shoots out an eight-foot tether that can wrap around legs or the torso. That's the one I saw the video of. Yes, yes, yes that's the bowler wrap. I, I, okay, I'm sorry, you're talking about, yeah, we have the bowler wrap um, and that, again, another tool, taser is not always a, a viable instrument, particularly when there's a lot of clothing in colder months where people are coated up. So the bowler wrap allows officers, uh, you know, just that three, four, five, six seconds to move in and help affect the arrest if it's on their legs or again, on their arms. Um, so. You know, we're, we're, we just got in training on that actually here uh, this earlier this week. So a um, lot of great tools out there that we need to, to give our officers so they can um, use the right one for the right situation. Right. Speaking of technology, you're also using drones to help police it in Papillion? We, we are. We're pretty proud. Um, we've assembled a pretty... Uh, exceptional fleet of, of drones recently. Uh, administration has been great in supporting that. Um, I think we're really moving our drone capabilities into an elite level. Um, we re re recently purchased this fleet that allows you to do a variety of things. Um, we can drop a, a, a rescue ring on somebody in a, in, a, in a lake if they're having difficulty. There's camera technology, there's FLIR devices on there for night vision. Um, you can do 3D mapping now. You can map a crime scene or an accident scene in a matter of minutes where the old days of holding the total station, um, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, you can fly over it, snap hundreds of photos. It'll, it'll calculate everything when you come back into you know, centimeters of distance. So I believe that drones are really going to become um, the next, you know, kind of like body-worn cameras were, you know, are and were, I think drones are going to become that next uh, thing. That's pretty cool, all that they can do. Uh, you can do so much with them. You know, one thing that we're really excited about is we have the Project Lifesaver, 
plan, which is uh, which or program, which is where you put a bracelet on maybe an autistic child oh, or somebody right. with dementia or autism, mm -hmm. and they wander off. Um, so they're working on putting that capability into the drones. Right now, it's all handheld, and you got about a mile of a mile of uh, uh, distance. You know, well, the drones can increase that up to five miles is what we're being told. So we'll add that Project Lifesaver capability, but if you can increase fivefold your distances to start locating that ping, if you will, wow. um, you could really increase the time or improve the time mm -hmm. that you need to, to rescue somebody. Well, you are the chief of a city that is truly growing. We know Sarpy County is the fastest growing county in the entire state. Papillion's population steadily climbing. What kind of challenges does this pose for the Papillion Police Department? We, we are growing, yeah. and um, I think not only for Papillion, but I think for for all of our departments mm -hmm. in Sarpy County, and probably even you know other other certainly other cities, uh, is the available pool of candidates. Um, you, you mentioned earlier the George Floyd unrest, and and you know that takes a toll. Yeah. People don't want to be police officers anymore. They don't want to mm -hmm. do the job. They're afraid to do the job. I think there's some are probably afraid of that scr uh, scrutiny that comes with it. Um, and so it's getting tougher to, to find you know good candidates. Uh, I will tell you in 1993, or 92 I think is when I tested, there was 430 or so candidates that wow. tested for a couple positions with the Pillion PD. Uh, our most recent test, I think after backgrounds, we ended up with 15 or 16 candidates. What a difference. Uh, I mean, that's incredible. Um, and and, and mm. so for us, Thankfully, we're only hiring, you know, generally one or two at a time, and so I feel really confident that we generate a couple really good candidates out of that batch. Um, but the concern is, you're right. If we needed to hire five or eight or ten, even depending on um, what what the growth of the city was occurring, that could be problematic. Not only to hire the right people, because I'm looking for guardians as well as warriors. Mm -hmm. You know, we need both, and, yeah. and not everybody can do both. Um, you need to have a guardian mindset now, uh, as well as being able to infect arrest and, and go out there and, and do the job. But moreover, um, you just want to make sure that, that, and I think the city leaders do a great job of controlled growth so that we have time to implement the officers we need. It's difficult to probably train more than two or three as well properly um, with the number of field training officers we have. and. So it's just if we can continue to, to, to do controlled growth and, and grow at a, at a rate that, that we can accommodate, then that, that's, I think, best for all. But so far it hasn't affected your day-to-day. -day. No, absolutely not. Yeah, we've got some, no, we've got some incredible men and women, like I said a little bit ago. Um, they do a wonderful job. And, and I think we've, we've, you know, I'm pretty proud of, of the hires that, that, you know, Scott and I brought on since uh, when, when he was here, Chief Lyons. Um, and, and I certainly have a great staff that can help me continue to hire good officers. Yeah. So you've been with the department for almost 30 years, <laughs> but you haven't been chief that long. <laughs> how, long how long has it been? Well, officially May. Officially May. <laughs> I, I, was, I was interim prior to that back in, since January, February. So, um, you know, more than about three quarters of a year, okay. but officially since May. I, you know, I pinch myself every day coming to work. I know that sounds uh, cheesy, but I, I, I've been enjoying this this last four months. Yeah. Uh, it's just amazing honor and privilege to, to to be a chief over such a great group of, of men and women, both civilian and sworn. Um, it's my hometown. I've, I made Papillion. I've lived in Papillion since 1975, I think, when I was four, a long time. four or five years yeah. old. Dad and mom moved us to the, to, my dad grew up in Papillion. Um, my uncle was sheriff of Sarpy County back in the 60s and 70s, so Dick Witted. So it's, it's an amazing honor to, 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 to be in, finally be in this position. Um, I'm following some pretty impressive you know, chiefs uh, you know, over the, the years. I mean, uh, Irv Portis hired me, and, and then of course you had Dan Hoynes, and Len Halus was the longest tenure chief, and then most recently Chief Lyons, Scott Lyons. So um, I learned something from all of those individuals. I try to apply it with my own style. Um, but we've got a, just a tremendous group of, of chiefs in Sarpy County, the sheriff and, and his staff. And um, so it's, it's great to have such cooperation and, and, and the privilege to work with them and, 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 and lead the people I am. And, and just that level of cooperation has never been better, in my opinion. So, so what have you learned as the top cop in, in your past, <laughs> in your last four months? What have you learned? Man, well, I've learned how important communication is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 they really crave that. 
and, I, and you know, again, I'm, I'm doing that monthly newsletter, which I think is, has been well received. Um, the difficulty is is just is is that the day to day, the meetings, managing those, trying to stay up on latest technologies, uh, improving those. Uh, you know, digital forensics was something that we were just absolutely abysmal in prior to Chief Lyons coming. It was non-existent. Um, but when he arrived in 2014 and I was promoted to deputy chief, uh, we added, um, you know, very, we added somebody to the task force, the Cyber Cybercrimes Task Force, uh, with the FBI, and um, that's now trickled down to other officers. So we're also improving in that area uh, with, with digital forensics, and we've added some great tools for that. Um, and, and so, most recently, a Toledo workstation that can parse out large data mm -hmm. information, use software solutions to look at that data. So, um, I think just continuing to manage all of those functions, and they all come with costs, managing the budget, managing the growth. Um, but I think I've ultimately learned that policing still, to its core, is what it's been, you know, since inception. And that is just relationships. Mm -hmm. And, and, and taking care of your people, giving them the tools and the equipment they need, and, and making sure that, that you're, you're addressing all those issues and not leaving uh, anything to chance. Yeah. You need a deputy chief. <laughs> you need a we're, we're working on <laughs> okay. that. We, we, we just recently were given three great candidates, oh, so I uh, just received those names, and um, we'll work through a final process with those individuals, and we'll, we'll do our best to pick the best one and, and move forward. and, and uh, I'm excited about that. Yeah, I um, bet. <laughs> maybe somebody take a few meetings off my plate. <laughs> there you go. I'm definitely excited about that. Two jobs for a year now <laughs> starting to, or close to a year is starting to starting to wear on me. But um, no, I've got a great staff, and, and again, I've uh, the officers are invested, and they've got a lot of ideas. Yeah, that's and, good. That's uh, good. And, yeah, it it yeah. is. And so you know, yeah, that's the other challenge: just making sure to hear those ideas mm -hmm. and listen to them, and and give them a voice. Um, and and uh, you know it's not my department. I say often it's our department. Yeah. Uh, I just I'm just at the top. I just lead it, but I, I need all of their help to, to be successful. Um, and and I tell I tell them that often. It, it's so I appreciate the the support they've given me to this date, and uh, um, I look forward to serving them long into the future. So I've learned a few things from talking to chiefs from various cities so far. I definitely learn every police department has its own vibe, its own culture, and its own personality. What makes you so proud of the Papillion Police Department? I really believe in the people we have. They really, really want to do the very best job they mm -hmm. can. Um, they are empathetic, even after using force. Again, I watch all the videos, mm -hmm. even after using force, they're getting the people up, they're dusting them off, they're making sure they're okay, are you hurt? Um, we don't have anything occurring after the incident is, in, is controlled. Um, they want to keep the citizens safe. We have a vibrant group of officers now who are doing a great job with our traffic task force and our, and our traffic grants. They want to take drunk drivers off the street. They want to enforce um, um, you know, speeding, low-level uh, complaints. And I will tell you, that's the number one complaint I get from citizens is speeding vehicles on their streets. It, it is, just day in and day out. Um, so I've just got an amazing group of, of, like I said, guardians and warriors. They can go out and be police, um, but they really want solutions to end peacefully. They really care about the product, so to speak, that they put on the field, if you will. I'm just my coaching vacuum. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> but, but, but they, they do. They do. And um, I think that's the most thing I'm proud of is we've really uh, created a group of officers and civilians, again, that aren't afraid to ask questions, aren't afraid to make suggestions, um, and, and want to be a part of a bigger team. Yeah. Well, thank you for sitting down with me. I got to sit down with my own chief. My, <laughs> yes. It was great. Being it was a, great. Thank you so much. Being a Papillion resident, we're <laughs> glad to have you.